Hi there, and uh, welcome to Draw With Me. Um, I am Danny Gregory, and it is Thursday, and as we do every Thursday, we get together and draw to the melodious sounds of leaf blowers. Last week, we drew Freud, Sigismund Shlomo Freud, and uh, what a cavalcade it was. I've been the largest collection of Freud drawings in the history of psychotherapy, so... Thank you for being part of it. Um, <clears throat> you know, I am just... I'm going to be noodling something in the background right now. <laughs> as the... Uh, as the leaf blowers blow their leaves. There aren't... Uh, yes. They just started like one minute ago. So, um, the reason I'm dithering a bit is because I want to fix the reference photo that we have up today. Let me just go and, and talk about that for a second. So right now, if you're looking for today's reference photo, here it is. This is how you get it. You go to community. Now it's possible if you're on an iPad, you won't immediately be able to do this. So bear with me. But uh, when you get to the community, you will find a post about today's thing and you can just click it and drag it. There's Freud from last week. That's basically the way that it's going to work. So Beth, if you couldn't find it, you just need to go and look at community and there it will be. Okay, so the problem, as Thistle has pointed out, is that they're a bit cropped and that is something that YouTube has done. So I'm about to post them, repost them, or actually I'm just going to post the one that we want to use. And so I will do it right now. And this is, this is live. It's happening live right now, folks. Right now. Or is it? Yes, it should be. So here, I'm going to put Big Toucan. And I'm going to post it right now. I'm typing it. Big Toucan post. So hopefully that worked. Okay. So there it is. There's the post. Boy. I think if you double click on it, yes, if you double click on it, it will open nice and big. It worked for me at least. Okay. Uh, if you don't have Scramble as an option, Callie, it's because you're probably on an iPad. So I'm not sure what to tell you, but you don't, don't worry about it. You don't need it. If you're watching the recording, you can go through all this, but if you don't, don't worry about it. It's, I will put it up on screen and you will see it and you'll be able to draw from it just as we've been doing. Draw With Me is now in its 75th year, and we've been working off the screen this entire time, so don't worry. <sighs> okay, it's not, it is on YouTube, yes. All right, I'm going to stop answering questions about this. Go to YouTube, go to our community channel page. There's a post. It has it there. You can download it. If you can't, don't worry about it. It will be on screen. All right. Now, I want to talk about some other things. I want to talk about, oh yeah, so last week I, I mentioned this book that I had just written, this little little ebook. Thousands of people took me up on it and uh, got it for free. If you haven't yet, if you haven't yet, then uh, here's your chance. Go to dannysessays.com slash book and you will then get a free ebook and you'll also get... Um, You'll get my essays every Friday. Okay, that's, that's enough about that. Here's what I want to talk about. Um, this is more serious. And I want to talk about an event that we are putting together that will be happening this Monday. Um, and it is, it is to support the people of Ukraine. We want to talk about how artists can help support this uh, humanitarian crisis that has been going on for three weeks now. And we are very concerned about it and we are very moved by what we have seen of the, the incredible, just horrible things that are happening in Ukraine. And we want to see as artists, is there anything that we can do to alleviate them? So. We have a few ideas. We're going to think about more. We're hoping for more contributions in terms of ideas 
from anybody who wants to give them. But on Monday morning, 9 o'clock Pacific, we're going to get together here on YouTube. We're going to do a live streaming event. We're going to bring in some guests. We're going to share some resources. We're going to share some ideas. We're going to do some, make some art in, in celebration, not celebration, in support of, um, of the people of Ukraine. So that would be great. Please feel free to join us. I hope you will. I hope you will. But uh, in any case, we are thinking about the people of Ukraine and um, doing what little we can. You know, we'd like to do more, but this is what we can do for, for today, for Monday. So, all right, moving on to a different country. Ireland. Today is St. Patrick's Day. And, um, you know, in fact, last night, because we love a good celebration, my wife and I had some Irish sausages with onion gravy and some taters, some lashings of Guinness. Boy, my mouth is watering just at the memory of it. But yes, we had, we had a lovely old time in celebration of Ireland. I'm not Irish myself, but my wife is, or of Irish-American descent. So, um, yeah, she, um, we decided that we would have it a day early, in part because we're going to an Italian restaurant tonight. Sorry, but yes, that's not something we have a choice about. We're being forced to go to an Italian restaurant by our friends. But as JJ has said, it's, today is St. Patrick's Day, and we want to just celebrate it, honor it, have some fun. So last week we talked about it a little bit, and we discussed leprechauns as a possible subject. And then I received an email from somebody who I think is Irish, and they said, you know, do you really have to reduce Ireland to a fictional, a mythical creature? Can you do any better than that? So. Connie's asking, will Monday's Ukraine uh, thing be taped? Well, it's going to be on YouTube, so of course it will be recorded. You can watch it another time if you can't make it. Um, yeah, so one of the things that we talked about last week was what about the... Um, about rather than reducing the Irish to a mythical character, the leprechaun, let's reduce them to to alcohol. So we decided that that we would follow Lisa's suggestion and uh, celebrate Guinness. Guinness, that mythical beverage. Um, and so, what I'm thinking is, this is. This is an ad campaign. These, this is actually a deck of playing cards, but it's, an, it's for rep, commemorating this fantastic ad campaign. It was, um, which just had great art in it. Uh, a lot of it was drawings of animals. It was about this sort of, a lot of it was about this zookeeper who his Beer is constantly being stole by various wild animals in the zoo. And uh, for some reason, he's obsessed with beer, and they're obsessed with getting it away from him. Um, so, yeah. So this is a campaign that began in 1928. And it was illustrated by... They're all painted by the same man, John Gilroy. And he was a, basically a portraitist. He did a lot of portraits of royals and various things like that. I have to say, I've looked at some of his paintings, of his portraits. They're pretty good. But I think these are much, much cuter. And there's so much more um, personality. So I thought, let's, let's take one of these guys and, uh, and use it as our reference. Now, if you want to, and you say, you know what, I want to do something else, you can, of course, you're an artist, if you'd like to use a different animal. But I'm thinking that we'll use the classic one, which is, in fact, it's so classic because it's on the back of the cards. And it's this toucan. Not the Fruit Loops toucan. I think his name is Sam. This is the Irish 
Toucan? Is it a toucan who escaped from the zoo and is now on top of a weather vane balancing a beer? It's a strange situation. But you can, um, you could, I put up in my original flawed post, I put up a bunch of different images. Look, if you don't, if, if, if they're cut off, it's a simple matter of just typing in Google, into Google and just type Guinness ad, and that will come up. So, um, yeah, this is, this is what we're going to focus on today. So there it is. That's the piece of art which is um, available to you, complimentary, if you can figure out how on earth to access it via YouTube. But also, again, a simple thing to Google. And I have decided in honor of St. Patrick's Day, to work on my Mac iPad, the old iPad, iPad. Let me turn it on first, get it going. All right, so this is what I'm going to be working on. You, of course, can work on anything you'd like, any tool you want to use, but I haven't used the iPad in a while here. And uh, ah, Patrick points out they're not cut off. You click on them and they become large and full. True. So that's that did work for me, but I thought some people might struggle with it. So. And you can right-click the picture, and it will download that way. So lots of ways to get it. So today is clearly about technology. Struggles with technology, downloading pictures, and, of course, drawing on the iPad. So, all right, so here's what I want to say about this before we kind of delve too deep into it, which is um, our goal here is to have some fun. That's our goal. In fact, let me go back and, and speak to you seriously. <laughs> full screen, all right? You know this is serious because I'm speaking to you full screen. Sit down. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Today, we're going to draw a toucan balancing a pint of Guinness on its beak, standing on top of a weather vane overlooking an Irish village, all right? Don't take this seriously. This is going to be fun. We're just screwing around. So don't worry if it doesn't look anything like it. And if you say, you know what, not into drawing toucans, want to draw a bear, want to draw a bowl of Lucky Charms, want to draw, I don't know, anything you want to, go ahead. So we're here to have fun, and that's what we're going to do. Are you, are you okay? You okay with that? I'm serious. <laughs> Lecture over. Why did I feel the need to tell you that? You're a grown person. You can figure that out yourself. All right, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna, so yeah, so I'm gonna focus on drawing this guy. So one thing I would say is, if you are particularly interested in getting this reasonably accurate, then try by looking, try looking at the negative space. A lot of negative space in here, you know, a lot of negative space that is around you know, the sky, for instance, the sky, because there's a lot of interesting curves in this animal. And so looking at the negative space will kind of help you to figure out what some of those curves are, how long some of these elements are. Like how thick is the beak? How long is the beak? How thick is the neck? What's the angle of that neck? Yeah. So, you know, I like to, I don't know why, I just like to start with a contour. I like to start with a contour of, I mean, the nice thing about drawing this toucan now that I'm doing it is that it's a lot of shapes. Like the shapes are really pronounced. So that is helpful. 
It's as if an artist made this. Oh, wait, an artist did make it. So let's look at this negative shape here. Can you see this purple? Making this clear to you? Okay, that's better. Um, yeah, so let's look at the negative shape here again. This negative shape in here, this shape here. Yeah, it's a very specific thing. It's helpful to think about it. So this is sort of where my horizon is, I guess. Let's go to the other side. That's sort of where my horizon is. And I made this little divot here because I think that's basically where that pint is. Something like that. I'll go back in and sh sort of tighten, sharpen this up. This beak looks a little thick to me right now, but I think that's because I haven't started to go in there and start dividing up all the shapes into the, the lines that make it up. So... The leaf blowers have retreated, but my dog is lying at my feet chewing something very noisily. So it's comforting. It means I'm not alone. I've got my dog, I've got my gardeners, I've got you. We're all together at this moment. Speaking of, I'm not really speaking of it, but. I was I wanted to tell you about somebody who you may not know much know particularly well, but um, an important member of our team is leaving us after much great service, and that is our friend Amber. Amber is. You may have noticed her answering questions here in Draw With Me. She's the person who puts the announcements up here. She is also responsible for things like our Instagram, other stuff. And she is leaving. This is her last Draw With Me. As a Maybe she'll come back, but um, we wish her well. We're really happy for her. And... Uh, It's been great to have her as part of our team working for Sketchbook School. And uh, we're sad to see her go, too, but happy for her. So we do. We love you, Amber Green. So thank you for, you know, I mean, among other things, this, and this is part of the Sketchbook School hiring philosophy, we try to hire people whose names are colors. And with Amber, we scored twice. Amber, Green. We used to have Morgan, Green. So now we're looking to hire more people who, um, you know, are polychromatic in their naming, at least. So, yeah. We like a colorful, colorful uh, team. In fact, JJ, I'm, I'm thinking of asking her to change her name to, I don't know, Violet, maybe? Payne's Gray? Payne's Gray Gregory. Um, yes, as JJ says, she is a rock star and she's moving on to something even better than Sketchbook School. Well, better for her right now. So that's all good. Um, let's get JJ, get out of the way. Thank you. Um,
So I'm sort of drawing this slightly differently than the way I often draw, which is I am sort of doing almost a pencil drawing, like a sketch, an underlying sketch. But I think I'm pretty happy with how it is, so it's not like I'm going to now. I mean, I could theoretically go, what the hell is that? I could theoretically go and like ink it in and do all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to. This is just a fun experience. I don't need to take it too seriously. If it's not correct, it's okay. And uh, I hope you feel the same way. One thing, and I probably should have mentioned this to you at the beginning, is it is helpful to think about the proportions of the original art that you're drawing from. So like, you know, this thing has edges, this image has edges, and if you want to stick to them, you, know, you might want to consider that. Like, What are the, you know, what's the frame of this whole thing? My frame of my iPad uh, screen is pretty much the same as that, as that thing is as the references, but that's, that is an important thing to, to consider because otherwise you can't use your edges as, ref, as um, you know, a way of, of figuring out where you are, like how far are you from the side of the picture and that kind of thing. So, you know, you do want to think about those things a bit, but you, you, obviously you may not have a piece of paper that's the exact same dimensions, but you can certainly... Just draw a frame. Just draw yourself a, f a frame that feels pr proportionate. Again, you don't need to measure and go through all that stuff, but you might want to think about it. So this is interesting. He has this tail that comes down, and it kind of continues his bottom there. And he has this little red tail, little red butt down there, I guess it is. And then there's sort of the various kind of stripes that he has there. It almost feels like it's a bit more of an angle. Does my Guinness look like it's going to fall? Or is it better, better balance? That's probably because I made this oval. So it's more like that. My guy is sort of worrying that he's going to fall, drop it. All right, so now let's do think about this um, landscape here down below. This, I guess, is an authentic Irish town, is it? Sort of mock Tudor business here. Kind of looks like uh, a little bit of a sort of suburban house in Connecticut, but I think this artist was English. But maybe this, I imagine that he was thinking about Ireland. He would seem like that would be important when you're representing an Irish beer. I'm just going to make this a bit, yeah. You see, again, this is, these are all shapes that I'm already screwing up that are defined by the negative shape of this road, for instance, down here. And then this, this is a negative shape. This is a negative shape. Here's a little person walking. Here's the roof of this building. And it goes back, and it comes down, and then there's another one that comes forward. But then I need to look at, like, what is going on back here. There's sort of a sweeping road, and then there's some sort of things on the horizon back here. There's something else. This is not all terribly important, but it is kind of fun to draw. See, I'm worried that I've run out of space, because I look at this beak. Let's come down. See, his beak is pretty good in terms of the edge of this thing. It's a little bit 
further away here. But then when I come all the way down, I realize that uh, I have bl more blank space here than I should have. So I'm just going to make some stuff up to fill it in because I didn't do it completely accurately. Here's that chimney. But these can be sort of little sketchy things, these rooftops, because, you know, they're not really a crucial part of this. They just give some context to where he is on the roof. Some more stuff going on down here, and then there's this building. Do you talk to yourself when you draw? It's good to do that. It's like a little conversation between your eyeballs and your drawing hand. So to point out to it what is going on, what's important, how you should, how you feel about it. I think this campaign is is really great because it is irrelevant in a way, right? I mean, none of this really has to do with anything to do with Guinness beer. It is fun. It is, you know, it's not dark. Guinness is, Guinness the beer itself is dark, but the experience of Guinness is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a friendly kind of a beer. It's... It's not high alcohol, it's easy to drink, and I think that that's part of what the point of this campaign is, just like, eh, you know, it's more in, eh, it's a lovely day for Guinness, it's a lovely day for day drinking, nothing like having three or four points before lunch. It's the Guinness way, encouraging consumption. American beer campaigns are are a little less fun. You got your Clydesdales, but they're all sort of noble, noble, and you've got like a lot of sort of I guess things like Bud Light and Miller Light used to be kind of fun. But I think now people are people don't like to make jokes about alcohol, I guess is what it is, maybe. I don't know. I have to say, this campaign, I definitely tilted this thing too much. Here it is the most important part of this, theoretically, which is the, the product, and I tilted it too much. I could erase it and redraw it. I recently had somebody comment, I think it was on YouTube, comment on the fact that uh, I am always inveighing against the use of erasers, and yet when I use the iPad, I erase stuff. They were, they were outraged by that. And so I've decided, you know what, okay, when I draw in public on the iPad, in front of you, I won't erase stuff. And instead, I'll commit to never making a mistake. So far, it's working out pretty well. All right, now I'm going to color it, because it's a toucan, so it should be colored. For those of you who are iPad enthusiasts, you'll be glad to know that I am opening another layer, and I am making it a reference layer. Just in case you were wondering what I was up to. See, because one thing I'm also thinking is that this... And this is one of the beauties, many, many beautiful things about the iPad is I can say, you know what, I think that this drawing, which I did timidly in gray, can actually afford to be black. And now it is. That's all it took. So I have a nice palette that I've built here of just oranges. I like to kind of collect colors sometimes. So this is this sort of got some nice oranges in it. I think it's going to work really well for this. Start throwing in some color. Whoa, not that much color. Let's not get nuts here. Let's 
What are you doing this in? Are you just doing it in a humble ballpoint pen? Or do you have $1,000 worth of technology helping you out like I do? I hope the former. Make the background a different color. There we go. All right, I'll dispense with that. I'll just color it in the old fashioned way. Nice. Guinness is close to black, but it's actually kind of brown. I'm moderately fond of Guinness. I can't say it's like the most amazing thing ever. But, you know, I appreciate it now and then. It's a good thing to have for breakfast sometimes. Have you been out on a bender? There is a beautiful, I think it's the headquarters of, of Guinness in Dublin, and it is a building that's shaped like a pint of Guinness, which I think is pretty creative, pretty interesting. Hi there. Yeah, I know, but I'm busy. So I, my dog wants me to play. Loves to play. Always playing. But this is not the time. This is serious time. We're doing working on a very important art project here. I have to say, I I do like working on the iPad. It's been a while since I've done it. It's been a long while since I've done it here on Draw With Me because I invariably get people complaining. Yeah, I liked it better when you didn't draw on the iPad. You know what I say to that? I liked it better when I do. So therefore, I do. Is that crabby? Or is it a fact? Oh, vicious dog, vicious pug attack. Is it perhaps less interesting to watch? I don't know. The thing about the iPad is also it can encourage you to be very... Um, very sort of anal and um, not loose and expressive. So I try to avoid that. I try to try to keep things loose so that I don't get into this sort of trap of computer drawing. You know, I want I want to 
do it with the same intent and spirit that I would have when I was just drawing with an analog tool. I think that's, that's important for my well-being. And, uh, you know, I still want to enjoy doing this. It's not like this is a paid project from some client who insists that I work digitally. This is still meant to be an expressive, personal thing. And, uh, and I just personally happen to find that having this endless toy box of colors makes it really fun. This is fun. I feel like I can play. There's a lot of freedom in it. As long as you enter it with the right spirit, which is not the spirit of perfectionism, but rather the spirit of experimentation and play. Because if art isn't fun, why bother? Certainly not doing it for the money. Not doing it for the acclaim. Although, you know, there's certainly a lot of acclaim to be garnered. The whole world is so desperately interested in art and artists. I'm being facetious, but actually... Um, starting to watch this Andy Warhol Diaries show, which is on Netflix. Sort of interesting. You know, the, the level of fame that he strangely acquired. Not strangely, I mean, he, he's deserving of it, but... Most of us don't really care about that. That's not why we're doing this. We're doing it because it's fun to do. So. Or sometimes it's fun to do. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's mortifying. Picking when you're doing it in front of a live audience. Try it sometime. It's fine when you're doing it in front of a live audience if it's going well. Then you feel like a hero. Not a hero. I don't really feel like a hero, but you, at least you feel like you know, you're not, you're not horribly ashamed. What's different about mine versus the original? It's probably in this eye. Eyes are so important, aren't they? They're just like, if you get the eye slightly wrong, the whole thing feels different. And it can be a little tiny thing, like just where is the highlight? Where is that highlight? All right, looks a bit better. And what about this town? I've kind of neglected the town altogether, haven't I? I'm not, I don't know how much detail I want to go into with this town. But I do feel like I need to do something to keep it looking a little less... Less of... Uh, 
recite. Let's add a bit of tone down there. Got to remember to do his feet. His feet are kind of clutched on there. And his leg, oops, his leg is going in here, so I've got to get that part in. Yeah, so having the iPad is like having this, you have so many colors, so many things to play with. And uh, it can be a bit daunting, but I, I, my, my attitude is basically, rather than trying to master everything, because there are so many things to master in this, it's be better to just sort of figure out what do you need to accomplish this particular thing. I think that I notice a lot of times that people do when they are first starting out with the iPad, is they get really into like making things transparent and having like things that look like airbrush and um, I don't know. It just ends up looking super digital. And I personally, pref what, the thing I like the most about the iPad is the fact that it is so colorful, just really great colors, and the, they're. You know, you get these nice flat colors, which you can sort of get with gouache, but you can't get with, obviously you can't get with watercolor, really, and you can't get it with colored pencil, particularly. So when I feel like I just want playful, flat color, that's where I go for. What do I go for? Speaking of playful, flat color, it was interesting in this um, Andy Warhol thing, they were talking about you know, his background when he grew up in Pennsylvania and uh, he had Eastern European. His mother was very into going to the church and um, what an influence that probably was in, in terms of, they were talking about icons um, and icon art and how the flat colors of like sort of the Byzantine icon, I, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Saints, that looks like an icon. Um, just how that, those flat colors were something that he grew up, bold, flat colors, but also sort of somewhat subdued. Bold, but also, you know, fairly limited palette sometimes. That was interesting. That something, you know, somebody who's so modern as he is would have that as an influence. But, you know, that's the stuff you grow up with has such a big bearing on who, who you turn out to be as an artist. Like for me, a lot of children's books that I remember as a kid, books meant so much to me, and children's books were really important. Um, but also, I grew up without a color television. We didn't have a color TV until I was like, I don't know, maybe in maybe in high school, no, even even after that, and. Um, but I do remember the look of color cartoons. Every so often you'd go to somebody's house and they would have a color TV. And the intensity of those color cartoons, but even more so, the most in intense color in a cartoon would be when you went to the movies and they would show a cartoon before the movie began. And that look of those projected colors on the screen really, really were powerful to me. And I remember we went to London when I was, I don't know, nine, maybe. And um, they had a theater in Piccadilly Circus that showed nothing but cartoons 24 hours a day. I just thought, I mean, 
I, now that I think about that, like, is that really what, the, was it really a, a, a whole movie theater that showed nothing but cartoons 24 hours a day? It seems improbable, doesn't it? But that's my memory of it, anyway. And uh, I feel like I remember going into that theater. Again, could just be a fantasy memory. I seem to remember going to that theater and uh, thinking it was just the most amazing thing ever. So yeah, so those colors have always been just something that I really like. So now I'm going and I'm looking at things like this line here. Can you see this line? It's, it just doesn't feel right. And that. Yeah, so there's little little lines that aren't quite right, but... It's pretty good. It's, pre it's pretty close. And what about the lettering? I've neglected the lettering. I like this font. It looks like, what do you think it is? Maybe Gil Sands? Grotesque? There's a typeface I really like that was Grotesque number nine. It's a very English typeface. I don't know if it's like that you see it in public signage. There was a series of books called Ladybird Books. Not like Dick and Jane sort of thing, but they would, they were um, about all kinds of individual, often non-fiction subjects for kids. And, uh, oops, you can't even see what I'm doing. Yeah, it's not great. What I'm doing is not great, but, um, yeah, so, and they use that Typefaced, grotesque number nine. I'm going to cheat. Scrunch this over a little bit. important to not just write the words, but to actually think about this typeface. Think about the spaces between the letters. It's part of the character. And I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat again. I'm cheating again. Why? Because I made this a bit too big. So I ran out of space. I have the power. <laughs> I have the power. And I'm going to exert it. Why am I getting this wrong? Why? Because the it's because my top row is wrong. That's what it is. You see how the Y lines up with the in the original the Y lines up with the top of the S, the last S, and then there's this blank space above the F, above between the, the Y and the F, which is right where the pint sits, 
And I got that all wrong. Because I was talking to you instead of focusing sharply on this. All right, that's more or less it. What about the frame? Do we want to put the frame on? I think we do. I think we need to put a frame on it. I think the frame is an important part of the drawing. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the frame, the edging, on it. Too thick? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I'll go back over it again. Yeah, again, my, my lettering has really um, has screwed up the top of this. Looking at, again, looking at this space in here, my space in here, there's not enough space above, but, there, but I, th I think it's, again, I just got my lettering. My lettering is too big, too bold. Wow. Okay, well, this is the last adjustment that I'll do because I know you're looking at me and you're thinking, well, I can't do that. I'm not on the iPad. I can't make these changes. You're cheating. You're absolutely right. It's completely unreasonable. And it's also the kind of tweaky perfectionism that drives me nuts when I when I when I give into it. But anyway. Maybe later on I'll go in and I'll work on this town some more. The set you've just shown up. You've missed all the good stuff. Oh, well. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing what you've done with all this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this off now. What is that? Is that the original? No, that's mine. That was pretty good. I was like, is that the original or is that mine? It is mine. Remember when I was yelling at you at the beginning and saying, you better have fun, that's what this is all about? I was having a lot of fun, and then I got into this whole thing. And it's kind of like the iPad, because it gives you the freedom to make changes, there's no limit to how many changes you could make. And that's a dangerous thing. Freedom without constraints is really suffocating, or it can just lead you astray. Something to think about in life in general, I think. It's like when we can do anything, we can often end up doing nothing. And, um, and I think that that's, this is an example of my getting involved with considerations that were not my original goals. My original goal was just like, let's have fun, draw the stupid toucan with a beer on its beak sitting on a rooftop. But then I started getting very involved with whether or not I was getting it right. And that became my preoccupation. Um, and yeah, it made it slightly less fun. I'm pretty pleased with this thing, but honestly, what I'd like to do, and maybe I'll do this later, is I'll just like go nuts and just draw a whole new one and make it much looser and make it more mine. This feels more like, this feels like a, a sketch for what the final ad looked like. Maybe it's to do with advertising. Maybe it's because... You know, all these years in advertising, it's like I can't I get into that mode of like, ooh, what if somebody's going to think about it? So, um, yeah, as John points out, you don't have to emotionally commit to your line. It's true. It's like, um, you know, it's like being married lots of times. Not really into you that much. Line, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to divorce you from my drawing. I don't know, I've never been divorced, but I imagine that that's how it works. Whereas if you're married for life and there's nothing you can do about it, you have to deal with it. And uh, so that's, I mean, and honestly, this is my own lesson. Right? Why I encourage you to draw with a pen in the first place rather than drawing with pencils. When you're picky when you're starting out is because of commitment. 
when you make a commitment, you're like, yep, that's what I'm stuck with. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to work about it. And uh, we're going to get to a good place. Um, this isn't a bad place. This is good. All right. My wife is offering me beer. So um, that might be a good idea. What does that even mean? It's true. It means, uh, I'm sorry. Um, when we commit to our lines, flawed as they may be, they become a set of new set of problems that are interesting to solve. But when you don't have to solve a problem because you can just delete it, you don't really learn from the experience and you don't come up with new things. You just get closer and closer to what could essentially be a tracing of this ad. And that's not what we want. We want to ultimately express ourselves and our, our uh, as Missy says, Pobody's nerfect. We want to we want to learn, progress, develop, but also be human along the way. Um, yes, so let's wrap this up. I have uh, I have coffee to drink. My wife is out there fuming, no doubt. Of course not. I love my wife, and, uh, you know, I married her in ink. I didn't sign the marriage contract in pencil. Um, you know, it's coming up on our anniversary. Pretty soon. Pretty soon will be our wedding anniversary. A joyous day. Um... Okay, so I'm looking forward to seeing what you've done. I want to see what your toucans look like, or if you decided not to do the toucan to do something else, or if you decided just to drink a lot of Guinness and kind of doodle. That's cool, too. Whatever it is you did, I want to see it. So let me just put, remind you of some important things. Um, Monday at 9 o'clock, right here on YouTube, we're going to be doing our live event for Ukraine. So please join us. And um, and let's hope that we can learn some stuff and um, open our minds and maybe make something cool at the same time. Uh, the Art for All podcast, new episode every Monday. Me and John Muir Laws talking about junk, interesting things. We're starting to, uh, we just released a an email address for the podcast, which is podcast at sketchbookschool.com. And people are starting to write us emails, which are interesting. So we're kind of engaging other people in our dialogues, which is great. Danny'sEssays.com slash book. Sign up for my ebook called Never Feel Guilty About Making Art. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. And finally, I want to see your toucans. So share them on social media. Don't send them to podcast at sketchbookschool.com. If people send me, just email me their art, I can't deal with it. I it, We have a system where we go out and look on social media, Facebook, Instagram. We find your stuff. All you need to do is post it and put hashtag SBS draw with me, and we'll find it. We'll track it down. Or put it in the schoolyard, if you're a member of the schoolyard. And uh, we'll get it there. So that will be fun. And um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And um, that way you will be alerted to new things that come along. New videos, new draw with me's, all that stuff. You'll be reminded of it. And a final thanks to Amber Green for your, for your service here at Sketchbook School. And um, we hope that we will continue to be able to draw with you and your children in the future. Thank you all. Thanks all for being here. I'll see you guys next time. On Draw With Me next Thursday and uh, every Thursday in the foreseeable future. It's been fun today. See you again whenever you have the urge to have a Guinness. Bye-bye.